Welcome to the Confidence Through Health Podcast. My name is Jerry Snyder. As a health, wellness, and sports performance coach, my goal each week is to bring you experts to help you take control of your health and build your self-confidence. Thanks for including me today on your journey to better health. I want to say thank you to Social Media Cowboys for sponsoring this week's episode of the Confidence Through Health Podcast. If you need help with a website, if you need social media needs for your business, if you need help with AdWords, SEO, all those things that you know you should be doing but you are too busy to do or you're too confused about, they are the experts that you need in your corner. If you're interested in launching a podcast such as mine, they help me edit my podcast and do a fantastic job making sure that all of the technical side of it is handled and we launch a nice, neat, edited podcast episode each week. So I want to thank Social Media Cowboys for their continued sponsorship of the Confidence Through Health podcast. You can find them at socialmediacowboys.com or you can find them as well with other sponsors at confidencethroughhealth.com. So thank you, Yogi Aaron, for being a guest on the Confidence Through Health podcast. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. So, you know, a little background about yourself before we get into... um, the meat of what we want to talk about, which is stretching and, and the the ideas about how to do it and what to do and if you do it and is it needed and all of that. Um, but, you know, you were just telling me it took you 25 years to figure out what you're now teaching. So like yes. what what instigated that initial like, OK, I, I've, there's a problem I need to solve. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I You know, growing up, in Northern Canada, I was very athletic. I went Mm -hmm. to an old boys boarding school where we did dog sledding. We snowshoed 35, 50 miles. So if you're a Canadian, that's a, or, or, you know, if you're metric, that's around 75 kilometers. Right. Um, we, I was also a, a trail cross country trail runner, uh, which is a little different than a, than a cross country runner. Right. Um, I was very athletic, ice hockey, uh, football, soccer, volleyball, you name it. Yeah. And, and also canoeing, you know, we did like three week canoe trips at the end of every year. And so by the time I graduated, I was 18 and I remember feeling very tight. Mm -hmm. And especially since I wasn't using my body as much, you know, that tightness was really settling in. I was starting to join the workforce and, (laughs) and, but I was also still very athletic, uh, Mm -hmm. when I could. And so I decided I needed to start doing yoga to stretch. So I was one of these millions, if not billions of people that, you know, associated or associates yoga with stretching. And, and I, I separated my workouts from my yoga and I started doing stretching yoga So when I refer to yoga back then, for me, it was stretching. So I'll just say yoga from now on. Right. But I started doing yoga and I immediately hurt my back, not in yoga, not when I was doing the stretching, but just in my regular life, throwing my back out and 18 thinking to myself, holy Mary, Jesus and Joseph, this is what getting older feels like at 18 (laughs) (laughs) and so I was just like what um so what was the solution you know uh the solution was to stretch more so I did and I started getting into different styles of yoga that was literally (laughs) hell-bent on bending me Right. And every time I would go to a yoga teacher and say, like, I've got back issues, you know, it was like, listen to your body, take it easy. Um, but we need to open your back. We need to mm-hmm. open your hamstrings. Your tight hamstrings are putting pressure on your lower back, which, by the way, is bullshit. Right. And so and then also we need to just stretch out everything, open those hips. So I did. And. I really started to cement in my belief system that in order for me to be pain-free, I needed to stretch and, right. and, and stretch very deliberately. Um, over time, I started de- developing practices, which is very akin to 
what is being taught out there is yin yoga, which is like long holds right. for long periods of time to really yeah. elongate the muscles. To make a long story short, I started developing more and more chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And over the years, uh, I started developing a series of issues. Um, I had to hang up my hiking shoes because my knees started crapping out on me. Right. Uh, really big time, like big, big time, not just yeah. like, oh, my knees are sore, but like, I can't walk for five days afterwards, sort, yeah. of, sort of issues, um, searing neck pain, shoulder pain, of course, lower back pain. Right. And it all sort of came to a head about six years ago now, when I had pain so badly in my lower back. I had to go to an emergency room of a hospital when an orthopedic surgeon told me I might need to do or might need to have a spinal fusion in my mm -hmm. lower back. And right. that was kind of a come to, you know, Jesus moment for me because I had been doing yoga all these years to stay young and healthy right. and pain free. And yet nothing was working. And it's kind of crazy, you know, that I never kind of questioned the practice before. I always thought there was something wrong with me. I always thought right. that I was fundamentally not stretching enough. I was fundamentally not dedicated enough. I was yeah. fundamentally lazy, you know, all yeah. of these stories to justify. It. And, and that was at that moment, I realized I need to ask the question, what don't I know? I have yeah. been giving this my best shot more than anybody I know. I should not be in the emergency room. And that kind of question led me to somebody who I had been working with over the years who had been doing muscle activation mm -hmm. technique on me. And so MAT is a, is basically, and I, I don't want to speak too much out of school because it's... Yeah. I, I mean, I'm trained in it, but I don't want to say something I shouldn't say, but right. it's basically a diagnostic tool to check if muscles are working and if right. they're not working, we have a way of, of getting them activated. Right. And so that's kind of like the lane that we drive in, in, in muscle activation technique. And so I talked to Eric, my friend who does this, and I went to go see him shortly after I ended up in the hospital and he showed me what happens when we stretch. We show, he showed me what happens when muscles are strong, mm -hmm. neurologically strong. I should really preface it by saying neurologically right. strong. Right. And when we say neurologically strong, there's a feedback loop between the brain and the muscles. And so when we stretch that, that feedback loop gets cut. And so right. what he did was he got my hip flexors strong. And then he did something where he passively stretched me quote unquote, and the muscle then became weak. And when I felt the difference between strong and weak, mm -hmm. that was like a big light bulb moment for right. me when I went, oh my God, I am, first of all, I'm never stretching again. Second of all, I will never teach stretching again because yeah. it's too damaging uh, to the body. We don't want to leave people weaker. So that's kind of how I got to where I am. Yeah. And I, from there started to study muscle activation technique, which was created by Greg Roscoff. He's mm -hmm. out of Denver. That's where the school is based out of. And I then was like, well, this is really a system set up for practitioners and clients. Right. Um, and so my big question then was, how do I translate this into yoga? How do I translate right. this into a movement kind of practice. And that's how I came up with a Yama. Nice. And because yoga really at its core is not stretching, it's connection. Hmm. Right. Like that's a connection. very good point. You know, yeah. and, and it's, it's, but now I, like you said, like I know plenty of people that will say like, Oh, I'm not going to that yoga studio because I didn't get enough stretch out of it. Or, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't do, you know, it, because that's what it has become equated to is yes. is just a stretching routine that yeah you know you still feel you know like if it's hot yoga you get the sweating and so you feel like you've burned calories or you feel like you feel like you've done a workout because your muscles have been stretched and and you know pushed to a limit or beyond yeah. a limit in some cases 
but that's really not what yoga is. Yeah. And so like, yeah, I would just, the commercialization has taken it to a different level. There's ju just before I, I want to respond to what you said, but I also just wanted to make a point that anytime you stretch anytime, you know, if I'm like, have my hand like this right. and I push my fingers down one degree or my wrist down one degree, I'm stretching. And therefore right. I am now pushing a muscle beyond its end range of motion. Right. Um, and you're right that people are, or the stretching has taken over yoga and mm -hmm. this is not a good thing for so many reasons, a plethora yeah. of reasons. Um, if you ask most people, when I say most, like 99.9% .9 of people, why you should stretch, they will respond and say, you should stretch to stay healthy mm -hmm. and, and stay uh, young. So a lot of people right. associate it with, well, who doesn't want to stay young and healthy, especially when you see, you know, beautiful, skinny white woman right. um, in doing this very graceful pose in Lululemon where you're like, right. or, or a guy, you know, a very fit guy like yourself, yep. um, you know, doing some sort of nice, beautiful back bend. Who doesn't want to be like that? So it sends yeah. this, it reinforces this unconscious message, but there is no mention anywhere in the yoga scriptures um, that I know of. Uh, and I consider myself somewhat knowledgeable yeah. um, to mention the word stretching or flexibility nowhere, yeah. nowhere. So this whole idea has been perpetuated and, and I could talk for half an hour about why yeah. I kind of in short, blame it on Jane Fonda workouts. <laughs> <laughs> Cause she's the one who really, I think, um, really reaffirm this idea of yeah. doing yoga in, you know, tights with, right. with leg warmers. And, right. and so that's kind of like the image, a lot of, especially men conjure, but yoga is a process of removing our suffering from our mind. Mm -hmm. And so we can go out to manifest and live, lives life's Per, live right. life's purpose and that has nothing to do with whether or not i can put my foot behind my head <laughs> right right yeah well and, and so when it comes to stretching like and so you take yeah. that and go like okay well well because i would say most people especially from an athletic standpoint if you did any athletics in high school right like before you do any activity any workout anything yeah okay everybody's got to stop and stretch Yes. Um, and then, and then depending on if who the coach is and what they've got, as far as their background, it's after the workout. Okay. Did you stretch afterwards? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I've changed a little bit about how I do that. Um, in that I don't do static stretching anymore in, in a pre-workout setup because of what I've learned about what happens in the muscle and what you do. And so it's yeah. all dynamic stuff of just like, okay, loosen everything up and make sure everything's working. Um, yeah. And not going to that end range yeah, because of what's happening in the muscle. But I still do stretching, you know, if it's like, oh, it, it, it's sore. Let me stretch yeah. and make sure that I'm sure. So, you know, so are we, are we, we're, are we continuing to damage the muscles in that situation? Is that so there is so much to unpack. I wish I right, could have yeah, a replay like... of everything you just <laughs> said, because I could talk for a long time. But I want to just start with with something that you said, which I think is very, very profound. You said to loosen things up. Right. And this here lies one of the biggest, I think, fundamental problems. Mm -hmm. So what muscles do so muscles we have to kind of like go back to basics when we were right. in school i i when i was in school i've been finding out not everybody had the same schooling experience as me right. but when i was in school when i say school i mean grade school mm -hmm. when i was in grade school i learned that muscles do two things essentially now i know they do more things but it boils down to right. two things they move bones mm -hmm. and they stabilize joints and right. in order to move bones muscles need to be able to shorten, right? Muscles need to be able to contract. And from an MAT perspective, a healthy muscle is a muscle that can contract and contract on demand. <laughs> so when I'm doing any range of motion, whether it's 
running, um, whether it's washing my hair, right. uh, whether it's dancing in my kitchen, grocery shopping, you know, bending over to pick up the grocery bags, I'm twisting, right. I'm using my trunk flexors. All of those muscles need to be communicating with our nervous system to do what? To be able to contract and contract on demand. If they're right. not contracting, aka shortening, sometimes they use those words short, uh, shortening and contracting, but they do mean slightly different things. Right. If they're not contracting properly, if they're meaning that they're not contracting on demand, now we are in a range of motion where there's an opportunity for instability. Right. And instability is always going to lead to injury. Right. Um, you know, think about runners running. So a lot of runners develop knee issues. Yeah. Well, what are the muscles supporting the knees and are those muscles working properly? And what are the overall arching muscles that should be supporting the, the hip, the hip joints, you know, right. the muscles around the hips, which yeah. I personally, this is an Aaron thing. I refer to the muscles around the hips as the shock absorbers of the right. body. Yeah. And so if the shock absorbers, what's the biggest shock absorber, the glutes, yep. if those glutes aren't contracting and remember the, the glutes are pulling the femur up into the hip joint. And that's what they're doing. They're you're right. pulling the femur up into the hip joint. If those muscles aren't working, now you've got a femur that's sort of like hanging out there. Yeah. I don't think we want to be running, right. you know, long distance, especially with femurs that are quote unquote hanging out there. And if they are hanging out there, which I know is kind of a weird word to use because sure. um, it's clearly not hanging out there, right. but um but if it's not stabilized, then that's going to put pressure on the knees and the ankles. Ergo, right. why so many runners and athletes have knee and ankle problems because their hip flexors and hip extensors, the glutes, the uh, psoas, are not contracting properly and stabilizing the hip right. joint. If the hips aren't stabilized, it's going to travel south. Yeah. So we have to reframe this idea of loosening things up. I think it's a word that we need to get rid of. One of the things I constantly see out there, especially in the yoga world is, you know, opening hips weekend, you know, right. come and open the hips. Well, if you think about that by bi biomechanically open hips is dislocated hips. Um, yeah, so the one thing I do sort of, and I'm going to say this sort of, I'm going to preface it by sort of, cause I don't know what you exactly mean, but yeah. I, I think I'm going to congratulate you for stepping into the realm of dynamic stretching right. more. And I don't like to call it dynamic stretching because again, it has a word stretching. Sure. And that kind of sets up this idea, but dynamic movements, dynamic mm -hmm. activation right. uh, before we are exercising to start, what we're trying to do is reinforce this neuromuscular connection. Right. We're turning muscles on. We're reminding the central nervous system, hey, my glutes are here. Hey, right. my hip flexors are here. A great dynamic movement. It's so simple and yet can save so many lives. <laughs> I like a little hyperbole. Right. Um, that is just when you're standing, you know, you grab a tree, um, a tree or a lamppost or a fence right. to stabilize yourself just lifting one knee towards the chest, right. just standing, yeah. lift one knee up, hold it there for a few seconds, lower back down, instead of grabbing the knee right. and trying to force the knee up, what you're starting to do is again, reinforcing that neuromuscular connection. And right. that's what we ultimately want to do is reinforce that proprioceptive mm -hmm. feedback loop so right. that the central nervous system knows where these muscles are. Yeah. Um, and knows how to communicate with the body. Right. Well, and that's, I mean, it's, that's great because that's one of the things that I tell, especially my younger athletes that are like, you know, 13 to 15, because a lot yeah. of times they're going through a warm up and they're just like, whatever. Okay. It's part of the workout. <laughs> right? Like They don't care. They're just, and I'm like, no, 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 no. You have to do each movement. Like, because usually I have them do like a, a, either their 10 meter or 20 meter walk as they walk through and do each movement and, you know, targeting the different muscle groups. Yeah. And like you said, I'm a whole, I'm only holding something for maximum two seconds. And then it's like, release, make sure. Yeah. And I've had to tell 
almost all of them in that age group. I'm like, no, no, when you do this, you should be listening to your body and saying, is it working properly? Does something feel off? Because yeah. if something yeah. feels off, then we need to address that before we go do an activity. Because that's telling you something's not working properly. You know, whether yeah. you slept wrong or you sat in the wrong position or whatever it was that caused that that to be off today. Yes. Like, you have to listen to that as it happens and and then be able to move forward. Now, if everything feels great, great. But like, it's not just this rote, like, okay, it's just part of the workout. I have to do it. Yeah. It's, it's a really, it's, it's that feedback loop that gets you set up for a good workout. Yeah. I want to respond quickly to something else you said, and mm -hmm. you kind of just brought it up again, which is, so you said, listen to your body mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that we need to do is, is to say, okay, listen to your body, which is great, but also start to educate people about the language of their body right. and what, how does the body communicating to you? So the body communicates to us specifically in this lane in two ways. It communicates to us through the language of pain right. and muscle tightness. And what's happened, and you kind of mentioned this earlier, and I, that's why I wanted to come back to it, is that we stretch to get rid of pain. But right. the pain, pain is always the result of inflammation. There's mm -hmm. inflammation in the body. Therefore, the pain is there. Yeah. And so what we need to do is, is ask the question, well, what has triggered the pain? So pain is caused by inflammation. Inflammation right. is caused by stress. Yeah. Um, and the big, the big ones is stress, trauma, and overuse. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's something I really have drilled into me. Like whenever somebody comes to me, oh my God, I've got shoulder issues. Well, you know, what stress are you causing to it? Right. And, and then this next question is, well, what muscles aren't working to stabilize the joint? So if there's pain in my shoulder joint, it's more than likely, not always, because I never use like to use the word yeah. always, but it's more than likely that there's muscles that are not working to right. stabilize the shoulder joint. So then the question is, what muscles? And once we start activating those muscles, the pain, I have seen this more than 95% of the time, the pain disappears yeah, and doesn't come back until the person causes more stress to the shoulder joint again. Right. But, but this, that is really kind of an important thing because in my lane or the lane that I've been driving in, in the yoga world, the solution to pain is stretch it out. And that's yeah. actually the absolute worst thing to do because it was stretching that created the stress right. in the first place right? Uh, by doing a lot of different things, but primarily turning off all the muscles that are supposed to be supporting the joint of the body. Yeah. So that's going to just perpetuate the problem until you're like me and end up in the hospital right. uh, with an orthopedic surgeon wanting to do surgery yeah. on you. <laughs> Which, by the way, when you said that earlier, I, I have a I have a friend who was uh, now he's he's transitioned to being more of an ER doc because it fits his schedule better. But he was uh, trained initially as a colorectal surgeon and anything that happens with like it was so funny uh, you'd be somewhere with somebody and he's like oh my gosh my my gut he's like i can cut you open and find out what it is I'm like, <laughs> like that's what they want to do right they want to cut you open like that's what they want to do um and so it yes. is it's a scary moment to be faced with that and go like oh wait a minute is that really the best solution though that's what yeah. they're saying because that's what they do right but it, we've got to remember that there's other options out there a lot of times yeah well, there, that's a really important point is like, there are so many people that are going to their doctor saying, I've got severe pain in my shoulder. I've got severe pain in my lower back. I've got some, okay, well, we have these, you know, pathologies going on, but here's some, um, you know, um, ox, ox, Oxycontin, yeah. um, and, or here's some, you know, medication. And if that doesn't work, you know, um, come back and see us and we'll cut you open. And right. what are we supposed to do? And that's why I'm on this mission so much because so much of P 
people's pain cycles, not everybody, but a lot of people's pain cycles like me is being perpetuated by going to these stretching labs, by right. going to have people stretch them out. And it's just making things a lot worse. Right. Um, and so people don't have to live in pain. And I'm 52 now. I'm living more pain free than I ever have. Yeah. You know, since I was in my 20s, for goodness yeah. sakes, and and feeling stronger mm -hmm. uh, than I ever have. So that's that's yeah. a really ha you know great place to be in. Well, and I, that's what everybody wants. Yes. Right. That's what everybody wants. Yes. Yeah. Is to be able to get up and do whatever they want, and and I think and and so whether it's because of like too much activity one day or yeah. it sounds like it may be because of overstretching, you yeah. know, you get to a point in life where you wake up and you get out of bed and you're like, Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to have to stretch. Yeah. Like that's the yes. first thing we think of because it's been so indoctrinated into us. We can't move. We're tight. Okay. I'm going to have yeah. to stretch to get it out. Yes. When is the better solution? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm tight. Okay. There's obviously an issue, but yes, just, basic movement is going to help me. And then I need to remember to address the issue. Well, muscle tightness. So I said earlier, the body speaks to us in two, you know, there's two things mm -hmm. or what two, two of the ways that it communicates muscle tightness and pain. Right. So I talked about pain. Muscle tightness is the body's response of saying there's something wrong. And so now we're going to go into a protective state. Right. So from a yogic perspective, you know, yoga is about do no harm. Right. You know, it's one of our, our basic principles that we live by. So why would you go and do something to violate your body's own protective mechanism? Mm -hmm. Why are you violating your body? <laughs> um, so from a bigger perspective, the real question should be what is causing or the source of the muscle tightness? So what we often do or what I often did before I had my come to Jesus moment was, you know, oh, there's muscle tightness. I need to stretch it out. And again, by the way, what are muscles supposed to do? They're supposed to contract and contract right. on demand. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. So if the, one of the other kind of principles that we've forgotten is this idea or this role of muscles in terms of agonist and antagonist mm -hmm. relationships. Right. When one muscle contracts, the other muscle lengthens. Now, a lot of doctors even use the word stretch, which is an inaccurate description right. because stretching denotes an idea. If I have an elastic band, I'm going to stretch it out, right? Yeah. Um, and so that muscle's not stretching, it's relaxing. Right. And its proportion to relax is equal to the opposite muscle's ability to contract. Gotcha. So if you've got tight hamstrings, it's your body's way of saying your quads are not working. Your hip flexors are not working. And again, yeah. working meaning not able to contract and contract on demand. Right. Um, and so if you want to get rid of your tight hamstrings, get your quads working. And yeah. you mentioned earlier, you have people hold stuff for two seconds, which is good. Mm -hmm. Going through slow movement, right? doing, you know, slow isometrics, because what are we doing when we're doing slow movement? You know that what we're essentially doing is strengthening the slow twitch muscle fibers. Right. And so it's those slow twitch muscle fibers that create in, that create stability. Right. You know, and so that's the domain that we want. We see a lot of people and I see this constantly, you know, people doing that, you know, standing with one hand on the goal, mm -hmm. uh, the fence, swinging their leg viciously yeah. back and forth, which yeah. is actually the worst thing you can do. It's creating more stress at that okay. joint, more trauma. So don't do that. Move slowly and deliberately. And from a muscle activation perspective, um, doing certain isometrics. So remember I told you that knee lift, hug mm -hmm. the knee, bring right. the knee up into the chest, yep. do that for six seconds and do okay. that six seconds, six times on each side. And you're going to start to activate all of those hip flexors. So six right. seconds, six times is sort of the magic number in, in turning muscles on, uh, okay. in terms of muscle activation practices. But 
we if we're going to address muscle tightness we need to start addressing where is the instability coming from when the body feels unstable it's going to tighten up if we walk out on ice for example you step right. up on ice what do you do you tighten up if yeah. you get scared you tighten up you freeze yeah. up so it's a natural response and and trying to tell that hamstring oh just relax you know is is like telling a really angry person, oh, just relax. What they really want to do when you say that to them is punch you in the face. Right. Yeah. Um, which is what your hamstrings kind of want to do yeah. when you try to force them to become <laughs> stretched out. Right. Oh. <laughs> so and, and and this is a huge issue as we age. Yes. Like yes. I work with with uh several people that are that are, you know, in the senior citizen realm. And, and typically the first thing I have to do with, with I would say 95% of the people in that age group is we, we have to address your balance first before anything else. And some yep. of them are like, oh, I'm an athlete. I'm great. I'm, you know, I walk all these many miles a day or I ride my bike or whatever. And I'm like, okay, but that but you're, you've been so many years of not doing so many other activities that, and I use the same words as those stabilizing muscles are weaker. Yeah. You can get by in life with the major muscles doing all the work. You're not going to be necessarily healthy. You're not going to be able to move as well, but you can get by until that major disruption to your balance happens. And then you fall and you break your hip because of the age and, and, and what else has been neglected from a strength building standpoint. Yes. Yeah. Well, you can get by until the body taps out yeah. and, um, you know, my teacher, Greg, always reminds me or reminds us that the body will always get from point A to point B, no matter what. Um, you know, you can do a little test and have somebody kneeling on the ground next to a, a coffee table or something. Mm -hmm. Most people need to put the hand on the coffee table to get back right. up because none of their core muscles are working. Right. Um, and there's, they're dealing with muscle tightness. So there's limitation and range of motion. So they have to kind of contort their body right. to come up. Right. And, and so again, that muscle tightness is going to become more exacerbated and you're going to keep, you're going to get up no matter what way until yeah. you no longer can. Right. And, and that's always a problem. So it's, you're right on the right track. The core stabilizer muscles, you know, because so many people are walking around with core stabilizer muscles that are not, again, contracting and contracting on demand. Yeah. A lot of tightness starts to appear in the body. I can't tell you how many times it's happened to me personally, but I see it in other people where their hamstring tightness disappears mm -hmm. as soon as the core muscles start working. Again, oh, contracting wow. and contracting on demand. Right. As soon as we get the core muscles firing up, activated, tightness starts to disappear in the shoulders and in the hamstrings. Right. And so because these guys aren't working properly and, and the core stabilizer muscles, one of the main functions, which doesn't get talked about enough, is their ability to rotate. They're trunk and, yeah. and, and spine rotators. So if they're not working, the, that's creating limitations in range of motion. Right. Then the body's going to be like, I don't want to turn here. I'm going to tighten yeah. up my, you know, where I can. Yeah. And it's fascinating to me to see like how much tightness disappears in the body once this, you know, or stabilizer muscles are are activated. Yeah. And so, like one of the things you keep talking about hamstring tightness, and one of the things that's a that's a a hot topic in long distance running is hamstring tightness and you know, oh, you've got to, you've got to stretch them out. You've got to make them loose. You've got to make them like all this stuff. But then, you know, you also look at, okay, well, some of the top marathon runners in the world, like they're not coming close to touching your toes. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, and, and so that it, that's what's clicking in my head is like the, the tightness it, we should be describing that more as a relative term to each other versus the ability to stretch and complete an activity. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And um, the hamstring tightness is often a symptom mm -hmm. of the glutes not working. Right. And right. the, again, I already mentioned the hip flexors, mm -hmm. but if the glutes aren't working, 
Now, remember what starts to cause muscle tightness and then pain, stress, trauma, and overuse. If you have the glutes tapped out, if you have the hip flexors tapped out, the body has like an, oh crap moment, right? I'm going to tighten anything up and I'm going to try and restrict range of motion because we don't feel stable. And then you end up dealing with hamstring tightness and then the hamstrings are tapping out. Yeah. And a lot of these runners are getting, you know, calf problems. Mm -hmm. And even sometimes in extreme cases, you know, calf muscles tearing. Right. And, and so, you know, what's fascinating, and this happened to me a few years ago. So that's why I know something of this topic. I started, I was doing running and nothing major. I was, you know, just five kilometer jogs, very easy yeah. on the beach. You know, I live on the beach in Costa Rica Yeah, and I would go out on these jogs and I started developing severe calf cramps. That's why I know about this. And so I went to go see Eric and he was like, your glutes aren't working. Right. and your hamstrings aren't working now your calf muscles are trying to work hip extension right they're acting as the hip extensors which it should not be happening again it right. goes back to body is going to get from point a to point b no matter what but your calf muscles which are really small compared mm -hmm. to the hamstrings the four yeah. hamstrings and the glutes glute right. max they're really small and so when these major muscles aren't working it's going to go downstream mm -hmm. until, you know, then you're going to tear your calf muscles. He's lucky. He said, you're lucky you didn't tear your calf muscles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what you're describing is actually something I just lived through because uh, I tore yeah. my Achilles in February. Um, yeah. So uh, it's a, it's a, it was a small tear, um, interstitial tear. And so I'm able to run again. I'm back like after treatment and everything. But but yeah, yeah, that's that's what we we had to go back up the chain and go. Oh hey, your your yeah. glutes stopped firing a long time ago, and yeah. and so I was like, oh okay. Um, and well, and, a lot of runners end up getting runners butt and yeah. which are you know a flat ass. Yep. And a lot of that is because they're running, but the glutes aren't working, right. and they're not even doing anything. So they're kind yeah. of like literally atrophying as you're running. Yeah. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's one of my top things for runners, like get your glutes working, get your hip right. flexors working and stop stretching. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I'm going to stop the stretching piece. Um, uh, cause I've already been working on the glutes, trying to get the glutes to do more and more. Yeah. Um, and, in and, and trying to listen to my body, tell me, okay, wait, I'm feeling more work being done elsewhere than where it should be. Right. So it's like, okay, calm down. Yes make sure everything's working properly. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, it's very true. And, and like, you can see it if you watch any, any track, like, you know, the professional level, college level, watch a track meet and look at the difference, not just the upper body muscular. Yeah. Okay. You know, a, a hundred meter runner is going to be more muscular upper body. They're doing more there, but specifically look at the glutes of yes. a long distance runner and a sprinter and you're going to see a massive difference yeah absolutely you know? yeah absolutely and and so on the if somebody's out there and they've got that oh they're like okay i've got muscle tightness and i've been stretching and like now i'm not supposed to stretch like the obviously the fear is okay that muscle tightness is going to get worse i'm not going to be able to move i'm going to be right like besides seeing somebody that 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 understands this right connecting with you and going okay like okay you understand this talk me through this like what is that expectation of like that muscle tightness if we address it uh, you know everybody wants to know like how quickly does it go away how quickly does it come back to function and obviously there's a degree uh, of severity muscle tightness in there. goes away immediately when you are you know activating muscles like mm -hmm. you 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 will feel and notice a response very quickly when you get like, for example, with the hamstrings, if you start getting the hip flexors to start working properly in the quads, and there's some simple things to do that. I yeah. mean, it's not complicated. You'll notice a huge difference right away. But one of the things that, you know, people need to understand, if you've got muscle tightness, you've got muscular weakness, the, right. the muscle that's tight is weak, 
and again, weakness is described or defined as muscles that do not have the ability to contract and contract on demand, mm -hmm. meaning that that neurological connection right. is, is not there. And if you stretch, you're actually now becoming weaker because you're creating more stress, which is shutting the muscle down even more so. And by the way, uh, you haven't brought this up, so I'm going to bring it up. Yeah. But especially for a lot of your listeners that are a little bit like Aaron is full of crap. He doesn't know <laughs> what he's saying. He's just saying stuff. Right. There's a lot of, there's documentation out there. We know that when we stretch, which is fascinating to me, because you actually hear a lot of yoga teachers saying this as well is a good thing. Mm. Uh, but a lot of scientists will tell you when you stretch, you desensitize that neuro connection between the muscle and and the nervous system you right. actually weaken it yeah does that sound like a good thing to you right no. i mean if your goal is to get the muscles longer okay but remember muscles aren't supposed to get longer they're supposed to get shorter right um right. in order to do their job so yeah. there's a lot of science out there and one of the um articles uh or, or studies that was done which i often quote is done is was done by Lenox Hill Hospital in New York mm -hmm. that did studies on athletes and found that when athletes stretched, their muscles shut down for about 30 minutes. Okay. You know, they didn't turn back on for 30 right. minutes. Yep. So if you're going out, you're a football player, you're a soccer player, you're a long distance runner. Do you think that starting out from a weakened place is a good idea? Right. I don't think so. Yeah. So if you don't stretch right away, you're starting out, you know, weak yeah. or, or stronger. Sorry. You're, if you don't stretch, you're starting out from a stronger place. But that's the important part of this whole puzzle is that if you've got tight muscles, if your muscles are tight and you're not addressing that neurological imbalance, and, and by mm -hmm. the way, it can be as simple as just doing some simple movements of standing really tall and just right. actively bringing that knee to the chest or lifting that straight leg out in front of you, 30 degrees up. Like it doesn't have to be complicated doing right. dynamic movement doesn't have to be complicated, but if you can get those muscles turned on, you're going to get stronger. A weak muscle is going to get weaker when yeah. you start doing activity, but a strong muscle is going to get stronger. Right. So what I would say to people is that you will start to notice the muscle tightness disappearing. Now, does that mean that you're going to put your foot behind your head? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably not. Yeah. Uh, you probably are not going to be able to get your foot behind your head, but what it, my always question is, why do you need to put your foot behind your head? Well, yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's a whole that doesn't necessarily <laughs> need to be the goal. But well, so one of the things that drew me away from the static stretching before a workout was in, just through different research and stuff, I learned that when you're static stretching, like you said, you're you're trying to lengthen the muscle, you're doing all this, but yes. you're also, you're, you're pulling glucose out of the muscle. And I was like, well, I want glucose in the muscle so it will fire. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I don't want to do that beforehand. But then, you know, the logic of like, well, if you're doing it afterwards, I like, oh, okay, everybody says that's the right thing to do. But, you know, <laughs> and I was like, you know, okay, if I'm doing it afterwards and I don't have glucose, I'm not really that worried about it because I'm not trying to go do another thing right now. I'm going to rest and recover yes. and really not do anything for another 30 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And so that, when you said that, that connected some dots for me too, about the time frame of like, oh, well, yeah, it takes you that much longer to, to rebound because that's how long it takes the glucose to get back in there to go. Okay. Now I'm ready to go again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, whenever we start to, so again, it come back to the lane that I really drive in, which is this neuro developing neuromuscular connection. So the neuromuscular right. system. And there's feedback, should be feedback going on between the neuro, the, the muscle to the brain and the brain right. to the muscle. And that feedback happens through what's called gamma motor neuron coactivation. Mm -hmm. And so that feedback is saying, hey, I can, you know, lengthen this much, I can shorten this much. Right. 
And some of that lengthening, by the way, is dependent on how much the opposite muscles muscle is shortening. Right. And how much the synergistic muscles are also doing their job in the shoulder. We have all of these, you know, like you internally rotate your humerus. There's like about seven, eight muscles that are doing the job of yeah. internally rotating the muscles. If one of those muscles isn't working, there's going to be a problem in the chain. Yeah. And so there's this feedback loop going on all the time. But the problem with stretching is now like so the muscle is saying i can contract this much now you come along and you stretch it yeah and all of a sudden the nervous system is like wait a second there was a muscle there a moment ago now i don't know where that muscle is mm -hmm. and you've basically cut that proprioception now one of the arguments which is by the way i think a really ridiculous argument is that you know well you can stretch and we know that it's going to disrupt that communication system that's why mm -hmm. you should stretch after you do your exercise first right. of all after you've done your exercise theoretically you've got a body that's activated mm -hmm. you're more neuromuscularly connected and you're ready to face life yeah why on earth would you want to enter <laughs> life from a weakened place yeah, okay true just put a pin in that for a yeah. second yeah. second of all why do we need longer muscles like mm -hmm. there's no there is no evidence that i've ever seen to suggest that lengthening muscles or forcing muscles to become longer improves muscle function and i i just i want to say this just for the cheap seats at the back because a lot of people don't hear what i'm saying right. what i just said was there's no evidence to improve the function of a muscle again muscles should shorten to be able to move bones and 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 stabilize joints and so a lot of people are like very fixated well muscles become stronger when they uh, are lengthened there's no evidence to right. really support that right and more to the point there's no evidence to say that it improves the function of a muscle yeah so there's no like the whole idea of stretching afterwards um in in forcing a muscle to lengthen it's it's just preposterous but every time we do stretch we disrupt that communication system and what we want to do is make sure the communication system is working. Yeah. If the communication system is disrupted, guess what the result is? Tighter muscles. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So now you're just on that, you're just on that wheel that you were on for so long of yeah. just, I think I'm doing what's right. And it just keeps getting worse. Yeah. Because it's, continuing to damage and in, in, increase the problem versus yeah. fixing it there's this uh, guy i well i could i mean this guy is just emblematic of so many other people who are like you know dancers and have a history of dance and stuff every time i see him he's stretching and i turn to him and i say well why are you stretching so much well because i've got pain well mm -hmm. but you're stretching to get rid of the pain but the pain is always there yeah, but the stretching makes it feel good and I'm stretching intelligently. Well, you know, like people just don't see the disconnect. And the point is, is like the stretching never will deal with the tightness until right. you deal with the cause of the tightness in right. the first place. Right. So from a, from a neuro standpoint, like, so when you said that, it just triggered this question. Like, so if I'm, I'm dealing with a, a tight calf muscle, right? So, yep. and I'm like, okay, this calf muscle is just out. I go to the grocery store. I walk around the grocery store, get my groceries, you know, 30, 45 minutes in the grocery store. Calf muscle getting tired as I'm walking around so much. And, and I'm saying this from a standpoint of like, I've done this many, many times. Go to check out. There's two or three people in front of me. So I'm just sitting there for, you know, five minutes waiting for the line to move. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm, my calf hurts. I could, I'm standing here. I don't have anything else to do. I could stretch it. And so I, you know, I put my calf on the little, the bar at the bottom of the, you know, the rack at the bottom of the grocery cart and push down and like stretch that calf muscle out. Like, oh, that feels so good. Is that, is that like 
and and then it like it it feels like it went away. Yeah. Is that because I'm stretching that that neuroperceptor so much that it's like okay, I can't feel that muscle right now. And so the muscle is still a problem. Yeah. But the nerve can't tell you that because it's not connected in the right way. Does that make sense? I think yeah, I would definitely say that you've but you've also been anytime we do something, we give the neuro the neurosystem, the brain, a lot of information. Right. If I came up to you and um showed you a video of a cat, you know, dancing with the dog, probably you might forget that you have sure. a calf, tight calf. Sure. So there's also what what you just said is very accurately true. You've disrupted the communication system. The brain is confused for lack of better words. I mean, we can right. give better yeah. medical uh, terminology, but, or accurate terminology, but the brain is confused for lack of better words. And there's also another thing going on in play, which is something my teacher taught me very early on. Cause I really have found acupuncture to work really mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a great acupuncturist, but one time I went to this particular acupuncturist who I had this pain in my back, my back, back slash right hip. And this was actually the precursor to me ending up in the hospital. But I went to him and he stuck a needle in my left scapula, mm -hmm. right around mid scapula, somewhere around there. Yeah. He stuck it in there. And after the session, the needle, he hadn't taken the needle out. He says, how do you feel? Stand up. And he still had the needle in there. Yeah. I said, well, I said, the pain was probably like eight out of 10. I think it dropped to six out of 10. Right. You know, so I'm still feeling it. He went in and he started moving the needle around. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah, of course. And and then he goes, how's the pain now? And I went, oh my goodness, the pain like dropped to about a three. So he moved it around some more and I think he got it down to a one. Yeah. And what my teacher taught me is like, that's called the law of distraction. Mm -hmm. Well, actually I call it the law of distraction. He called it something else, but yeah. it's like a magician. If you keep saying, look here, look here, you're not paying attention to what is right. going on over here. Yeah. And so the that's just the neuro system getting like focused here yeah. it's kind of forgotten here but guess what as soon as its attention leaves the scapula it's going to come back to the right hip you haven't solved yeah. the problem by the way just as a um to edify i actually do believe in acupuncture it yeah. just depends on the kind of acupuncturist you go to and a right. lot of them do trigger you know trigger point therapy yeah uh which actually is very synonymous with muscle activation a good mm -hmm. muscle good acupuncturist knows how to turn muscles on right. so that's a whole other discussion i don't want to get into right. but i didn't want to throw yeah. acupuncture <laughs> under the bus yeah um in this conversation because i yeah. actually do believe in it it just depends but so i think like with you and your example like yeah you're distracting you're giving the the you know, the neurosystem, more information, and it's got to right. process that information. You still haven't dealt with uh, the problem. Now, yeah. a quick solution, because I'm always about giving yeah. quick hacks, a simple solution then would have been if you have a tight calf, just kind of support your body a little bit, lift the foot a little bit off the floor, bending the knee, mm -hmm. and kind of flex the foot, come and create some dorsal flexion, right? Again, what's moving the bones into dorsal flexion, all of the muscles in the front of the shin, the anterior tibialis, the right. peroneus muscles, you know, you're starting to activate those muscles yeah. and, and getting those muscles to start working. Guess what? Calf starts to loosen, uh, let go of tightness. Again, a lot of calf tightness is tracked back to the hip flexors not working right. and especially the hip extensors, the glutes. Right, right. And so, and, and that was another thing you you were talking about earlier that came to my mind is that instead of doing the, the, you know, static stretch of, right, like I've got tightness, okay, let's go just hold this stretch for 30 seconds. Um, instead of doing that, it's going to, okay, well, let's do a range of motion and, and put the body through a range of motion if if it's in the shoulder like put it through the range of motion and go like okay where does it 
because that'll trigger like, oh, I can't do that. And that defines yes. a little bit more about what muscle is messing up and not doing its job and not functioning properly. Then you can go and address that versus if you're just like, okay, just do a static stretch and hold it, hold it, hold it. Yes. Hold it. Like a lot of us need to flip the script in our brains because mm -hmm. we've been wired to believe if I can't bring my arm over my head, it's because my traps are tight mm -hmm. or something, you know, the yeah. muscles that are lengthening are tight. Well, that's true. They are tight, but that's not what's moving the bones, right? What's moving the bones is what muscles are shortening. And this, yeah. this is something that we've just been so anti-programmed to not recognize. Like we just yeah. don't think about what muscles are shortening, but I can't say that enough look at what muscles should be shortening. I also just wanted to give you one more like tidbit. So mm -hmm. coming back to your calf muscle and yeah. this may or may not be true, but oftentimes the muscle tightens up because it's kind of, it's kind of gone into a tonic state, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it's, I kind of like sometimes compare it to a computer that freezes up, yeah. you know, what do we do? with a computer that freezes up, we reboot it. So sometimes right. our, our muscles literally need to be rebooted. So I gave you the hack of like lifting the foot up. What right. about coming into plantar flexion, pointing mm -hmm. the toes in a gentle way? Because if you probably right. point them too much, it'll actually start to cramp up again. Cramping right. is muscle tightness. Yeah. So you just kind of like going through different ranges of motion starts to activate the muscles doing yeah. some very slow um, ankle uh, rotations, very slow. Yeah. Um, and going through all those ranges of motion starts to build that proprioception with the muscles that are probably asleep and yeah. causing that cramp, uh, that muscle to start tightening up. Right. Um, well, I want to be respectful of your time. <laughs> Fast, I've loved this fascinating conversation. I love it. Um, you're you you have you've you've mind blown. Like I'm like okay, uh, <laughs> definitely going to change some things in my life. Um, in 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 not just me personally, but how I I I teach other people how to do things because, um, like it, everything from what I know from an exercise physiology standpoint is like it's a hundred percent like logical. It makes complete sense. Yeah. Um, and it's just, yeah, I think it's, it's one of those things that happens with athletics, especially that it's just like, no, that's not the way I was taught. So we're just going to do it this way because the yeah. research hasn't made it down to the coach that's at the the starting level, whether you're five or eight or 12 years old, you know, those coaches, it hasn't made it there yet. Yeah. So, well, it's just, you know, unfortunately there's a lot of things and, and we can, you know, bring up other examples of in sort of the, the world conversation where we just say things over and over until people believe it's the truth, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and stretching, unfortunately, is one of those things where it's been so locked into the human psyche since what I think probably around the eighties, maybe yeah. even seventies, yeah. um, where it's just been perpetuated. And I think it's just snowballed mm -hmm. to a point where you can't turn on the news now these days without some quote unquote expert, right. um, who by the way, isn't an expert in muscle function, right. uh, to perpetuate, oh, you should stretch. If you ask your doctor, like you're like stressed out, you're dealing with some pain in the shoulders, he's going to say to you something like this. Well, I heard that yoga is really helping a lot of people. You might want to give that a try. Well, right. because it's a doctor saying it, it automatically mm -hmm. lends credence to my doctor said I should do this. No, right. he didn't. He said that he had heard it yeah. was helping. And so these kind of mores get, get yeah. um, you know, more cemented. And, and so I'm on at least thank you so much for having me on to be yeah. able to have this conversation and at the very least, I hope that your listeners uh, get some useful information and at the very least think about things. And the big question is, is what I'm doing making me stronger or weaker? And right. and that's what we have to be honest about. Is this helping right. me or is it is it debilitating me? Right. So 
for that person that does want to connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Are you on social? Is it website? What's the best way? Uh, well, two ways that they can connect is I, I think I gave you a link, but if not, I'll give you a link. Um, it's my free seven day pain-free series that they can, cool. you know, tap into. It goes through the seven major muscles that we need to have strong in our life. I go yeah. through all the seven major muscle systems of the body, um, and, uh, talk about glutes, hip yeah. flexors, you know, that sort of thing. And I give people simple hacks right. to start getting, and if they're interested, then they can go from there and learn more. Um, they can go to my website, yogaren.com or reach me on Instagram. I always am happy to answer questions. If people, awesome. you know, message me, uh, um, it's Yogi Aaron on Instagram and I'm always available there. So awesome. I love to help and, and work with people with that. Awesome. Well, and you can tell that through your, your, your passion about what you're doing. Um, and and I'll put all those links in the show notes so people can easily get to it and and connect with you and 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 stop stretching as your book is called and start <laughs> living a functional life, right? Because we want the muscles to function, yes. like you said, and and that's a big part of it. And and that bleeds into so many other things. If your muscles are working right, there's so many other pieces of life that fall into place. Yes, so. we live happier. We yep. when we're in pain, pain debilitates the intrinsic wisdom mm -hmm. of our passion and soul. Yeah, uh, physical pain, and so that's why I'm on such a mission to help people live pain yep. free. Yep, that's awesome. Well, I I commend you on it, and uh, if there's anything I can help you with in the future, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thanks for checking out the Confidence Through Health podcast. Please subscribe, post a review, share this episode with those you love who need a little extra help with their health journey. Visit allinhealthandwellness.com to learn more about the coaching programs that I provide. All episodes are produced by the Social Media Cowboys, your source for all online marketing needs. Go to socialmediacowboys.com for more information.